This is just a quick video today. I want to show you something that I thought was interesting that I bought on eBay recently. It combines two of my favourite things, one of those being Nixie tubes and the second one being rare or unusual hardware. As you can see from the top of it, it's a random number indicator and I'll just plug it in and give you a demonstration. To use it, you just set a maximum number and a minimum, press that start button and it will generate a random number between those two. And that's it, that really is it. It doesn't do anything more than that. So if you're pushed for time, you could always just stop watching this now. However, if you want to hang around, I've got a couple more things I can show you. For example, if I set the highest number to being 99 and the lowest being zero, you'd think it would choose a number between perhaps one and 99 or zero and 99, but it doesn't. It's zero up to 98 if I set it that way. To get zero to 99, I've got to choose 100 as the highest number. It picks one less than the highest, but it includes the lowest so this would be 1 to 99. So I'll just demonstrate that by picking a number between 1 and 10. So if I was to put 10 as the top number that's only 1 to 9. You can see that by looking at the machine here. The second digit in from the right just isn't doing anything at all. It's only the right hand digit that's cycling between 0 and 9 and stopping on a random number. If I now change the left hand high indicator to be 11 it's now going to bring in that second digit in and eventually if I press that start button enough times I'm going to get the number 10 to display. So we'll just fast forward in time a little bit and there you go. Now just for a bit of fun, try and think of a number between 1 and 100 and we'll set it to generate a number in that range and we'll see if anyone gets it right. So think of your number now. Here we go, 3, 2, 1, start. And the number it thinks of is 98. Who got that? Hands up. Well done, that man. I'm sure somebody watching this will have got this right. We'll do three of these. So let's have a look at this one. 11. I bet lots of people said 98 because you always get those people that pick the previous number. And the third number is 31. Right, now the thing that people always go on about with random number generators is how random are they? Can it really be random if a computer's doing it, etc, etc? Well, the way this one generates random numbers is it just counts them and then stops at a random point. Now you can really only see that first digit counting up that way, but when I slow the video down you'll be able to see the second digit along is also doing the same thing. And then when I show it again at 960 frames per second, the third digit along is also just counting up. So that's all it's doing. It's counting from zero up to the number you've set it at and then stopping at a random point. So the randomness is generated by the delay between when you've pressed start and when the digits are displayed. And that's an indeterminate amount of time. It's not the same every time. So you press the start button one time and the digits will display quite quickly afterwards. And then another time it will take a couple more seconds. Holding down the start button does nothing until you release it and then it will do its countdown until it displays the digits. And you could think maybe I'd hold down the start button until it gets around to a certain number, but again, the delay after you've released it varies each time. So that's how it works, but the big question now is, what was it used for? And that's a good question and one that I've had a struggle finding out the answer to. Initially, when I saw it for sale, I thought it was some kind of lab equipment. So I got in touch with the two people I know who've got more familiarity with that kind of stuff than I have. And that's Andrew from the back office and Fran from Fran Lab, both here on YouTube. And they were kind enough to get back to me and say, no, it's not something they've ever seen in use in a lab. So I've crossed that idea off for the moment. And I returned to Google searching for things like uses for a random number generator. I also asked people on Twitter and one of the things that had popped up when I was doing the searches was this, which is by the looks of it a modern day version of my device. It has six digits on this one, but it's the same thing. You put in a low number and a high number and it will generate a random number between those two. And apparently something like this could be used for generating the winning number in a raffle. So for example, if I'd sold 500 raffle tickets, I could put them in this, press the button and say, congratulations to 248 you've won the speedboat however if i've got that wrong and you've used one of these yourself for other purposes then please get in touch and let me know what you used it for i'd be interested now this particular device looks homemade it's got a handle on here which is clearly one that would be used on a drawer the wood is cheap chipboard with some adhesive veneer applied on the top it all looks very homebrew until you get underneath and then you see it's got a serial number on it. Now you wouldn't tend to put a serial number on something that you've made for yourself. So this was a commercial product. Now if we look inside it, we can see in the back here, it was made in 1978, which is very late to be using Nixie tubes. 
the presence of a quality control check date might indicate the possibility that more than one person was employed in putting these things together. And notice the backing for those Dixie tubes is roughly folded over black construction paper. Now the reason I opened this up wasn't just to show it in this video, I had to reseat one of these chips initially that had become loose in transit, but after I'd done that it's been working fine. The components all appear to be off the shelf, this one coming from radio spares, and if you look underneath here, look at the amount of wires there, a bit of a rat's nest, but it works, and if you look at the circuit board you can see that it's a copper etched one, looks like it's all been done by hand. So it looks like someone had a cottage industry making these random number generators in 1978, and they did a good job after all, it's still working 40 years later. Although I have noticed one little bug in it, although that perhaps is down to its age, or maybe it's down to the fact that it thinks I'm not acting my age, because I was trying to get it to display 80085, just just for fun, and um, it didn't want to do it. Maybe it's got a childproof lock on it or something. No, it's not to do with that, it's the fact that it won't generate a number in that range until you set them three apart. So if I have 80084 as the lowest, 80087 as the highest, it will then generate a number, otherwise it just keeps looking for something that it never finds. However, when you set it to those two numbers, it picks 80084 every time. So there's a bit of a bug on those numbers up there. However, if I set it to 80085, it just keeps hunting. It won't do it because that's two digits apart, but if I set the other one to 80088 as the highest, it will then pick 80085 as the lowest. And finally, I get the thing displayed that I wanted displayed, however the joke has now long gone. So there you go, that was something I didn't know existed until I bought it, and also back in 1978, I should have mentioned earlier on, this would have been very expensive given the amount of work that's gone into it as well, so whoever bought one of these would have paid quite a lot and would really have needed to generate five digit random numbers, and if you were one of those people who had one of these in the 70s or something similar, please let me know what you did with it. But that's it for the moment, as always, thanks for watching.